Yeah, let's do get to it. All righty. So thanks for coming today. Uh, we are going to be navigating the virtual career fair together. And I wanted us to, we wanted to put this together to at least make sure that you're, we're starting off on the right foot. As you can kind of see my virtual background. Uh, we, want to, we want to go from something that's very unpolished to, to a place where we feel very confident and prepared um, going into a virtual career fair, speaking with recruiters uh, about internships, full-time, part-time positions. And so uh, my name is Jorge, we're with Caitlin and Zach, and we are career advisors uh, in the career. And like I said, th this is going to be an opportunity to network with employers. Even if you're not looking for full-time positions right now, this is a great time to start practicing speaking with employers just about what types of opportunities are out there, what types of skills that I need to be developing uh, as an undergrad or as a graduate student um, for when I am ready to start applying for full-time positions, okay? Um, so we've heard feedback from students about what it was like last semester doing a virtual fair. And one of them is the fact that now you have individualized attention from recruiters. Um, you are signing up for one-on-one -on -one sessions for group sessions. Pre-pandemic, you were sitting, you were standing in line for 30 plus minutes even sometimes uh, to speak with a single recruiter, a single company. And so this streamline, it streamlines it so much uh, more efficiently. That way you sign up for a time slot, you have their individualized attention for those 10 minutes. Um, and, and so it is critical though, that you do sign up ahead of time for group sessions. And these typically are like informational sessions from employers about what types of positions they're recruiting for, um, et cetera, okay? And so make sure that you're signing up for group and one-on-one -on -one, uh, position or time slots through Handshake, okay? And just as a reminder, make sure that this is written down and you, and you have registered uh, in Handshake. Um, it is February 26th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Now you don't need to be there the whole time Again, you're picking what work for you. And so this is an almost all majors career fair where even if you're applying, let's say at an engineering firm, that doesn't mean that they're only hiring engineers. You know, they might be hiring uh, business students. They might be hiring communications uh, students, HR folks. So just depending, don't look at a company and say, oh, they're, they're not, they don't have my major because they might. All right. So, and that's where we do our due diligence and our research. And we're going to be talking more about that soon. So Caitlin, I think, uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us about before the fair. All right. Awesome. Yeah. So there are a few ways to help yourself be prepared for the virtual career fair. Um, so we're going to go over a few of the resources that we have that we feel will be really beneficial for you. So the first one is going to be the online career center and i'm going to make sure to guys show you all that page um, sometime a little bit later um, but this is going to be a great um, way for you to access our modules and so we have a couple modules that we feel will be helpful the first one is going to be one on your handshake profile this is something we are going to discuss today but in case you forget anything or want to do something more at your own pace um, we do have a module on handshake um, profiles um, and then with that your goal for Handshake is going to get your profile to be about 80%. So today and through those modules, you're gonna be able to figure out how to do that. Um, and then we also do have a module on career fair prep. So if you wanna kind of refer back to what we did today, you're gonna to be able to do that through that module as well. Um, some other things that you're gonna be doing when it comes to Handshake and that we are gonna discuss is making sure your resume is visible. Um, so this is gonna be a really great way for employers to see who you are and what you're about um, because they are able to see these documents and um, able to reach out to you ahead of time if you do have a completed profile. Um, Handshake is gonna be where you registered for the fair, which Jorge mentioned, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, and it's gonna be a really great way to research employers. So how to get yourself logged in um, is that you are gonna go to this website, pnw.joinhandshake.com. You're gonna click the blue button um, and then log in with your PNW email and boiler key. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up so you can visually see it. So this is what your login screen will look like. 
Um, so as you can see, you're going to go to the pnw.join handshake. Caitlin, we're seeing the presentation screen. All right, thank you. Let me go ahead and reshare. All right, are we seeing the correct screen? Yep, we're good. All right, awesome. So this is going to be your login screen. As I mentioned, you're going to click here. Um, it's going to ask you for your boiler key information, and then it's going to take you to your um, profile page. Is everyone seeing the profile page? Okay. Just the uh, yeah. login screen stuff. All right. So it looks like you have to reshare every time. That is, that's fine. All right. So here is your um, handshake profile page. Um, okay. So what you're going to do is that with your main screen, let's go ahead and first show you how to get logged in. Um, as you can see here, there's a few different tabs you can go to. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and click events. Um, all of our events are going to pop up, such as today's event. Um, you can either scroll down this way and find it, or you can go ahead and search for the Spring Career Expo. All right, here we are. Um, so on this page, you're going to go ahead and click register. Um, and then it's perfect, kind of sets you up for your next steps. So it's going to ask you to sign up for sessions. So what you're going to do is you're going to click these employer sessions. It'll um, then start showing you all of the employers that are available to you. Um, so what's great is that can give you a little like synopsis of what that company is about, and then you can start seeing what type of schedules that they're offering. So it looks like a lot of the employers so far are offering some one-on-ones, and then this employer is also offering a group session. So as Jorge mentioned, group sessions are going to be more like info sessions, more about the company, when one-on-one is going to be that um, individualized recruiter um, time. So if you're interested in meeting with this employer, you would go ahead and click the one-on-one -on -one session. You would go ahead and click what time slot that you wanted, um, and then you would click confirm. Um, so when you click confirm, all of your schedules will start popping up right here. Um, so you can know exactly what you signed up for and kind of what your day will look like. And then you can sign up for as many as you need to. All right, so after that's all set, you wanna make sure that your profile is good to go. So here's your profile. So sorry, you come up here and click my profile. Um, as you can see, I have a profile started. Um, and what's great is that Handshake will kind of assist you in this process. So some main things you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that this information is correct. Um, so for you as a student, all of your information will be here. So make sure that is the correct major, the correct graduation date um, and all of that. The next sections you're really gonna to wanna to focus on is gonna be your work and volunteer experience. And this is going to be very similar to your resume. Um, so if you already feel like you have a pretty solid resume, you can go ahead and put your bullet points in here and start building it this way. Um, some other things you want to do is add your organizations and extracurriculars. Um, courses you feel may be really important for an employer to know. Any projects. Um, and then skill set. Um, some information you're also going to want to make sure is that your interest is filled out. Um, so this is only visible to employers as it's telling you here, but making sure that yours is turned on that you are searching for an internship or job, what you're interested in and kind of what you are seeking. Um, and then lastly, I mentioned that you are able to put documents on your profile um, and making sure that's public. So when you scroll down, you're going to see these document section, you're going to go ahead and click manage documents, um, and then you can add a new document. Um, as you can see, I already have my resume uploaded here, and then I make sure to click visible so that employers are able to download my resume and look at it ahead of time. All right, so that's mainly your profile. As I mentioned, we do go over more in depth handshake profile things um, within our online career center module. And so kind of while I'm already on web pages, I want to go ahead and show that to you. Um, so the Online Career Center is going to be a resource that you're going to access through your Brightspace and it is an, a non-academic course. So make sure you're looking in that section if you're having trouble finding it. Um, so when you go to our content, um, you can go ahead and see all of our um, modules that we have. So if you want to go over more of what we did today, make sure you check out our Getting Started on Handshake one.
And I know Zach may talk about this later, so I'm going to let him go ahead um, and show you more, more of the modules later. All right. Well, let me go ahead and switch back to our presentation. All right, so one thing you are gonna to wanna to do is start researching companies. And so within Handshake, um, you can search, you can look at all the employers and then you can um, figure out kind of what they're hiring for, where they're located, what they do and how you fit into that organization. Um, so I can go ahead and look back at the employer pages, but that's all gonna be listed on there. So let me go ahead and switch back. All right, I apologize. So when you are on your main Handshake page, you are able to search employers. Let me go ahead and look at the jobs. Sorry, now that we're back on this page. So when you are looking at an organization, let's say you're interested in working for Target, um, you can go directly not only to their job fair page, but they also have like a more direct in depth target page. So as you can see here, target is really good about adding information to their um, profile. So you can look at all of their reviews, their interviews, um, more of an overview, and then kind of looking through to see if target is what is for you. Um, so information, as I said, you're going to want to be looking for is what they're hiring for kind of what they're about and how you feel like you would fit into that organization. So making sure you're reading these profiles ahead of time. Um, before the job fair will help you um, feel more confident what you're communicating with them. Caitlin, if I can just add in real quick in terms of the what's on the expo as well, and you can keep sharing the presentation, but um, just for those of you that are, are viewing this, that employer list and who will be in attendance for the uh, expo will actually be updating uh, with adding more employers between now and the 26th of February, um, just as employers register with us as they get closer to the event. So just as you know, um, opportunities um, and employers will be added um, to a limited extent um, between now and the 26th, which is the actual event. All right, thank you, Zach. That was really helpful and I uh, can't believe I forgot that. Okay, so um, I already kind of went over the Online Career Center um, and kind of what that webpage looked like, but some other things we wanted to bring to your attention is that we do have a resume and cover letter module. Um, if you feel like you are really interested in the fair, but you aren't sure kind of how to get that resume started, uh, this is gonna be a really good starting place for you. And then if you feel like you have any more questions after these modules, you can go ahead and make an appointment with us. I'll be more than happy to work with you on your resume or on your handshake profile. So you feel confident walking into that event or virtually logging into that event. Um, and then lastly, even though we are in a virtual setting and a lot of us are you know, starting to feel comfortable you know, wearing our sweatshirts and our normal things at home, you are gonna wanna dress up for this event. Um, I would say try to dress business formal if possible, um, but if not, at least trying to wear a, um, a dress shirt, a blouse and a tie, um, some type of suit jacket if possible, but making sure that you are still dressing up, um, having your camera on, which is important, employers do notice if you do not put your camera on. Um, unless there is a situation where you couldn't, make sure the employer does know that. Um, and still just trying to look our best when it comes to addressing employers. Okay, thank you, Caitlin. So she gave you a really good, um, a really good synopsis of kind of getting prepared for the expo and making sure that you're getting into the places that you wanna to get to and in terms of your preparation before you actually are attending an expo and talking to these employers in this virtual setting. Okay, so some of the stuff um, I'm going to touch on a little bit, like she mentioned, and that we can touch on in our online career center and things you can access to even prepare even more. And that makes that stuff on the day of the fair even more uh, accessible and more, uh, for lack of a better term, successful for you in that perspective. So if you want to click to the next slide there for me, please. Caitlin, so what are we getting into here is the virtual environment, the etiquette that goes into the uh, into the Spring Career Expo and into the virtual career fairs that, that you attend. And it's not, you know, it's a little bit, it, it goes into that preparation that, you know, that, that Caitlin talked about in terms of signing up for sessions and, you know, having the 
um, have every, having everything of, in terms of what employers you're going to meet with, everything like that lined up and ready to go. But then you're getting into the actual virtual environment and what that looks like and what are the subtle differences between the in-person fairs and the in-person perspective compared to what's not going to be virtual. And keep in mind, um, I know this is a, um, a relatively timely thing and we're in a different kind of environment in terms of our virtual etiquette and virtual job fairs, things like that. But this isn't something that's going to be going away anytime uh, really in the in the near future it's something that will be not only for in our current uh, environment but also just in the future employers are utilizing this and they're going to keep utilizing this vir virtual um, information to make sure that they can have even more context than necessary so having this stuff ready to go is great for the expo of course but even more moving forward is going to be um, good good uh, good experiences for you so what you can see in terms of making sure that virtual environment is ready to go, that it's just as successful as it would be if it was in person, is as you can see, having a quiet, neutral background, right? So what that means is you don't want a lot, anything in the perspective of things that can be distracting from the content that you're actually going to be talking about, okay? So as an employer, when you're trying to really focus on the stuff you're talking about, when I'm talking to an applicant, you want to think about, I want to make sure I'm really listening into what you're saying and not worried about something that's going on in the background. If there's anything distracting, if there's movement, if there's stuff making sound, anything like that um, can be very distracting, which then takes away from the content you're bringing to the table. So the point of that is you wanna make sure you're cutting that out as much as possible. Now, keep in mind, it's not always 100%, uh, especially if you're doing this from home, there's only so much you can do, I understand that. But to a certain extent, you have the opportunity to think about what your quiet neutral background might be, even if it's a blurred background, if you're able to have a non-cluttered background, if something just to make sure that is unkept. I will say from experiences that I've had working um, as a recruiter, when you meet with somebody, um, uh, particularly an applicant that's looking for an op opportunity, when either somebody's running around in the background or you have maybe some unkept um, scenario, I've actually run into a scenario where someone had garbage on a table behind them, which I'm, I'm not here to judge that, but in, to a certain extent, it makes it so these slight differences of who I'm making that connection with. And it turns out that that was a slight distraction, which takes away from some of the content that they have, which is why it's important to have that quiet, neutral uh, background. And just keep in mind that anything within your background in this virtual setting is, is going to be a slight representation of you because it's literally coming from your screen. So that's what that looks like. So anything that you have within your environment is going to be um, something you want to make sure you're, for lack of a better term, proud of showing to that employer, at least confident in that presentation. So that's kind of a slight difference between the other uh, virtual setting compared to the in-person setting. But what can be the steps in terms of in terms of stuff that relates regardless of if it's in person or not. And some of that might be body language, you know, having those types of eye contact, the like Caitlin talked about having the professional dress attire, at least from the waist up if you're going to go virtual, right, in those perspectives. So what we're getting into is you know, thinking about monitoring that body language. So small details. So the difference between slumping or sitting up straight. And it might sound like a big deal. It might not sound like a huge deal, but it makes those slight differences, especially in the virtual setting, which could be that difference of eye contact. So I'm going to give you an example. I don't know if you can see me, but the perspective of if your eyes are down at the keyboard, if they're up around something else that's around the laptop compared to actually being on the camera, on the actual webcam. And that gives you that example to show that you're showing that little bit of um, the difference of not only uh, preparation, but also that, you know, just that connection that someone can have that may not be there perfectly um, in person, but it's the same as if you were meeting them in person, you want to make sure you're maintaining eye contact. Same concept would work. So you're making sure that that connection is staying there. Um, another perspective is having that active listening and showing that you have that um, being uh, exemplified. So for example, you want to make sure your screen's on. So an employer actually has someone that they're speaking with and they can have those interactions such as a head nod a thumbs up, I heard you, something along those lines to so that you're actually having those um, information, yeah, they're actually taking in this information and actively listening to it um, in order to be able to respond to them effectively. So what it comes down to is removing those distractions. So just like you would, you turn your cell phone off when you go to a job fair, or at least turn your sound off, if nothing else. Same concept, you're trying to re remove as much distractions as possible. And one other perspective, especially if you get to the group settings, let's say you sign up for a group session. Um, when you're not speaking, just as a courteous uh, thing to others, mute your mic, you know, especially if you're in a situation where your background's making some noise. And even if you've told the employer, like, look, I'm in a situation where I have childcare, I can't quite 
you know, I can't turn, can't turn the kids off. Right. So in that example, you can at least communicate that you have that scenario that you can't work around and you mute the mic when you're not speaking. And that at least gives the uh, impression and you can at least leave the video and have those active listening things to say, I'm listening. I hear you utilizing the chat. Um, and then just listening to others as they go. So if you want to hit the slide for me, please, Caitlin. So as you go forward, here's what we're looking at. Here is what you're going to be looking at. Let's say you've signed up for sessions, you got that individual session or group session, um, and you're in Handshake, you're ready to start. This is what it's going to look like for you. So you'll have you and the employer, in this case, or the group session, it'll have a list. It'll have a big bunch of blocks for all the group people that are in as well. But you have the option, you'll see the chat, and you'll see that, uh, you'll see who you're speaking with. And as you can see, it may not look like a big difference here, but there's a big difference between when you're speaking to somebody that's actually in front of you and, and in that virtual setting compared to when you're looking at a black screen. And for the employer perspective, and we've gotten this feedback a lot, is the more interactions you can have, the better it's gonna be. So when you're into this, just like Caitlin mentioned, you wanna make sure your video's on and you're being um, active within that communication. So having that video off makes it look like you're not quite invested in it. Even if you're listening on the other end, the employer won't know that. And in that sense, you wanna make sure that your video's on and you're being uh, responsive to what they're saying even if your mic is muted so you're not making sound you can still have that communication which I know some classes you might be in that don't require that video keep in mind this isn't a class a little bit different you want to make sure you're having that communication you're actually trying to make that connection as much as possible right so as you can see all sessions will have the option for handshake video audio and text-based chat so there's uh, so there's no customization types so there are customizations it's up to the employer and the student joining the session, how they want to how they want to connect. So it could be through chat, it could be through unmuting themselves. It depends on the specific employer you're talking to at that time. Um, so as long as you're signed up for a session successfully, you'll be able to join up to five minutes prior to the session start and throughout the duration of the session. So that does give you a good insight into getting in there. However, that being said, I would encourage you guys to show up five minutes before the session, or at least at the time of the presentation. Um, in order to be successful. We don't want to jump, jump in late and then make the recruiter necessarily repeat things as necessary. But that's kind of gives you the visual of what you'll be getting into in that perspective. So the next step on that, and if you could move it over, thank you, Caitlin, appreciate that. So the next step that you're getting into is the actual execution. So you have everything in terms of the setup, you have the technology going, you got the pre preparation going, now you're getting into the elevator pitch. And not just the elevator pitch, but the actual execution of that interview in those in those job fair skills, which some of that comes along with an elevator pitch. And the reason this is brought up is you go into a lot of scenarios, especially in the job fair setting, to say, "Tell me about yourself. You know, tell me about why you're interested or why you're speaking with us today." Something along those lines that you will do in an in-person or a virtual setting all the time. And it, most of the time, even if you're in a one-on-one -on -one session, it might be that first question you get. And it may not be directly called an elevator pitch for you, but that's what they're looking for. Essentially, what it is is a 30 second commercial that tells the employer specifically a little bit about who you are in roughly 30 seconds to a minute. And the reason it's called an elevator pitch, for those of you that don't know, is if you're getting into a scenario and let's say you walk in an elevator with your the CEO of your favorite company walks in with you, you now have that elevator ride to tell them why they should be hiring you over somebody else, right? So in that example, what goes into that elevator pitch and being prepped in how to communicate in these uh, short bursts and these short scenarios like this. So you can see the breakdown in front of you in terms of the elevator pitch and what goes into that and who are you professionally? So your current status. So I'm a current student, current PNW student, uh, majoring in, making this up, engineering, looking for this opportunity, right? So it's an overarching statement uh, of the professional that you are, right? So it's, it sounds really quick and then it's just a matter of once you get these things put together, making them flow together smoothly. So that next point, you have the, I'm a current PNW student, recent graduate, soon to be a graduate of PNW, and what's your highlight reel? That next point is in terms of two to four, couple of highlights that you wanna say, I have really skilled in this, here's some projects I've done, here's some experiences that I have that I bring to the table, right? So some of those recent accomplishments you may have. So I'm a recent PNW graduate who's got uh, multitude of experience with engineering internships and fill in the blank, whatever it would be for you. And then you get into the perspective of why you're here. Why are you talking to this individual? Why should they, why should they care about the stuff that you're bringing to the table? And a lot of that comes into one to two sentences about specifically the company you're talking about and about the role you're interested in. So 
one of the things that go along with this and a little bit in that preparation of how you research employers, what they're looking for, the job descriptions you're looking for, you wanna communicate why you're interested besides the fact that they're hiring and that they're paying and that you want a job. Yes, that might be the gist of why you're interested in this stuff, but the perspective of the employer is why do you stand out? And it's something about the, it could be a mission statement. It could be the product they do. It could be um, the, the product they sell. It could be the reviews they have on Glassdoor, whatever that is for you that you find. And you saw that employer and said, I really want to reach out to you, even if it's like a location and they fit the work that I want to do. Awesome. At least get that gives the specific into why you're interested and why you're talking to this employer. Um, and it is something where you would have to, you can give yourself a good frame for here's what I want to say every time. But then when you talk to each different employer, you're looking at what do I want to specify for this employer and this individual as I talk to them, All right? So you go into a little, little bit of that research and that's something I would encourage you to do. And you can do this um, through the online career center as a tool. Obviously we can help you with that in the career center to kind of draft what that would look like and then get comfortable with that. But within the online career center, you have access to see we have some videos in there for you that can walk you through how to build it and really give you some templates to say, here's a guide for what you would say. And then it's just a matter of practicing to the point when you're in this job fair, you know what you want to say and you're ready to execute it as needed. And one perspective that isn't actually on here that's actually a good transition into our next slide here is the great questions you want to ask. So one way to wrap up that elevator pitch is going into what are the things that I want to move forward into? And no, you're good, Caitlin. I appreciate that. Next slide's good. Um, so the next one you go into is the, it's always a good transition between the elevator pitch set. Have some questions ready. Keep that conversation going to think about instead of ending it on just a statement of who you are, that's great. Now, what's something you'd like to know? How can we move the conversation forward? And some of this stuff will come across within, this, within these experiences in the job fair um, and in these communications that you have. Again, whether it's virtual or in person, these things are still um, going to be critical for you. And one of the things to think about with these great questions to ask, you can see the list of strong and weak questions. And there's, you can come up with a bunch of different strong questions that work and a bunch of different weak ones. Here's the point that you want to think about is some of the research that you're doing on these employers should help you come up with some questions. So really what you want to think about is the questions um, that you develop should be insightful, show that you've done some research on it, and show the passion and interest behind the company, the position, something about it, right? So your question shouldn't be, what do you guys do? What's your service that you provide? If you can do a quick Google search or you can do a simple website search on their, on, on their webpage and you can find out what they do, then you shouldn't be asking that in a job for you should have that information already ready. So you're thinking more about some things that maybe you want to learn about the position. Maybe it's, as you can see, what are some challenges facing? How do you define success for someone in this role? What does that look like um, in terms of the questions that you want to know. And one of the reasons that I encourage you to do that research and come up with your own questions is because as the employer, I've seen employers light up when they have a student ask a question that is specifically um, for them. And it's clearly shown that they've done that research compared to someone who asked a question um, that might be something as simple as what does this company do? And keep in mind that employer will probably answer it nicely, but that doesn't mean you're getting a call back. And that's that perspective of having those strong questions. So you've done that research. And so, so an example could be, I, I saw in your mission statement that you guys do this. Um, what are some of the keys to making sure that you can execute that? You know, some of those little basic details that are really showing that interest and showing why you could fit in there um, and even how you relate that with your skills. So you could even say, some of the skills I bring to the table are awesome communication skills to work with a team. How would that fit into some of the projects that you're doing with your organization? Right. So those are some great questions to really just as a, as a guide to think about, you know, what would I want to know from this employer? And the more research you do into that, into these employers, into the jobs that they're posting for, more like the more likely than not, you're going to have some good questions to work with. So it's just stuff to think about. And we, again, with the online career center, we have some of those tools to help you develop what those questions might look like and how to research that. But if you can go to the next slide for me there, Caitlin, I appreciate that. So not only are you asking questions to the employer, but the questions are going to be coming at you. If maybe not in the group sessions as much, but especially in those one-on-one -on -one sessions or when you get to interview stages, right? So you want to make sure you're prepared to answer questions about yourself. So as you guys can see, many employers will open the conversation with telling me about yourself. It's a great way to get an idea of who you are and for the employer to get an idea of who they're talking to. And that's where that elevator pitch comes back into, come, comes back into uh, importance, I guess, for lack of a better term. It's something that 
it might get a little repetitive for you. Keep in mind, if you meet with, let's say you want to meet and schedule, I'm making this number, if you can do 10 to 15 sessions that you're going to do within the Spring Expo, you're probably answering the tell me about yourself question at least 10 times within that. And within those 10 questions, you want to make sure you're giving them specified answers for that specific employer. So it might sound a little tedious, but once you guys get familiar with that, once you go through some practice and you know what you want to say, you can then get more familiar with it and get really confident in what you want to say. So it's a good point to start it out with. And then it's the point of, uh, you know, being proactive, you know, um, and that comes back to that research on the employer, making sure that you can fill in answers that they want to see. So when they ask you a question about what drew you to our organization today, it should be more than, oh, I just saw you were hiring, which again, that might be the gist of why you're originally reached out. But for the purposes of this employer, you want to communicate to them that, hey, I'm really intrigued and I really want to know more about the projects you're doing. I'd love to be a part of them in some way, shape or form. And that's a good opportunity to see in that proactive research to show that you have questions ready to go. Uh, and then part of that goes into being prepared to talk about your current situation. How do you fit into what they're looking for, right? So why are you interested in this employer in this position? So the specifics there, but also getting back into the knowing your own skills. So case in point, if you were to go into a situation where you're talking to an employer and they ask you, what are some skills you think you'd like to bring to this organization? Something that I'd like you to think about is look at your own resume when you feel comfortable with it and then point out something on there. If I were to point at something as an employer and say, tell me about this specific point, how would that point help me to the position that I want to go into? So even if it's a quote unquote unrelated job, if you can find a way to say, well, in this retail job, we really worked on working as a team and communicated to make sure we met with customers. So in this position, I really could see myself working as on a big project with a group of people because I know how to communicate with people. I know how to get that job done. And then you can combine that with your education of the expertise that you need for that. And that's where you can kind of look at on your resume. How does everything on that resume relate to the position you want to go into? Not so much job titles, but the actual skills you're getting from that and how does that relate to it? So if you're able to know yourself front and back to be able to say in this communication setting or this uh, this one experience setting that I had, I was able to execute moving forward with that perspective. And that leads into how we can show that off is the STAR method, which goes into how we can answer some of that question. This is more of an interview stage, but it's more just kind of a perspective to think about when you're asking, how have you held, how have you handled this one situation before? And many of the stuff is in the online career center. We can help with like mock interviewing and walking through how to answer this type of question. But as you can see on the screen, and we'll record this, uh, this is getting recorded, so you can play this back and pause and take a look at this in detail. But basically looking at what's the situation you're in, the task, what's the thing you need to accomplish, what's the action you're going to take to make sure that task gets accomplished, and then what's the result. It's just a good frame to get you to practice those questions and how to answer where you're coming from in terms of how to move forward with that. So in order to keep this time a little bit, that gives you perspective, but I'm going to hand it over to Jorge to kind of talk to you about the next perspective of now you've been successful at it, what do you do next? What's the next step? All right. So you've done the hard work. You've done 90% of the work. And now it is the finishing touches. And so what we need to do is make sure that um, after the fair, we're, we're taking care of certain logistics. Okay. Make sure that you're reaching out to employers. Um, so you want to make sure that you're keeping track of everyone that you spoke with. So that includes, you know, writing down their names, their titles, contact information. Okay. And when you're taking these uh, notes, uh, make sure that you're referencing something within that conversation. So for example, um, I've been in an interview before where the interviewer asked me about a certain topic and it reminded me of a podcast that we had spoken about. And I asked them, have you heard of this podcast? Um, and after the actual interview, I thought it went really great. I thought the interview went really great. But after the interview in my uh, email to them, thanking them for the opportunity, I made sure to mention that podcast um, just to make them feel like I was really paying attention and that I truly value the conversation that we had. Okay. So take those notes, uh, make sure that you reference it later. Okay. And you can keep track of these notes on something as simple as a notebook, um, or it could be something a little bit 
uh, more advanced, you know, Google spread, a Google spreadsheet and um, even in Handshake, you could take notes as well. Okay. And so update any applications uh, as necessary. Okay. So if a certain employer asks you to make, sh to, sh to make sure that you have a cover letter, but all you have is a resume, that's something you need to follow up with and make sure that you have a cover letter written as well. Okay. If you know, you're having a conversation with an employer and they say they need somebody that has AutoCAD experience if you're in engineering, but you don't have the word AutoCAD on your resume. You know, that's just a quick edit that you need to make um, in your resume. Okay? And then lastly, reflect on how you can improve. Okay. And so this could be what types of questions did they ask you? Um, how confident were you in those responses that you gave them? Okay. And, and then think about it. Tables turned, you know, did you ask some really good questions? Um, this is a two, as Zach has said, you know, make sure that you're asking them some really good questions as well and seeing how they respond to it. Caitlin. Um, so you, you can send that email, you could send an actual letter by writing it out, um, you know, follow up quickly after the actual fair. Okay, that, so that's within the day, maybe two after that. Um, but again, make sure that you remind them how you found or uh, the conversation that you had. You know, hey, I'm a Purdue Northwest student. We actually met yesterday at one o'clock uh, and we spoke about X, Y, and Z. Um, I am super interested in your blank position. Um, and I wanted to see what would be some next steps uh, after I actually apply. Okay. Make sure that you're rereading your emails or your thank you letters uh, that you're sending them. The grammar matters, right? Like little details on a thank you email. If there's an error there, they might think that that's how you're going to perform um, when you are in the session. Okay. And then lastly, if you said you were going to apply for a position and you were really interested, do it, okay? Make sure you're reading through those job descriptions and make sure your application materials also represent who you are, who you want the employer to know you as, okay? And so make sure we're doing this in an ethical way, following through on what you say you are going to do, okay? So if you said you were going to apply, make sure you do so. If after the fact, you know, you've gone through the interviewing process and you've been offered uh, the position and you've accepted, we should never renege on a job. Okay. So if you've accepted the offer, just because you've been offered something doesn't need, doesn't mean you need to accept it. But if you do accept it, you need to make sure that you're following through with that position. Okay. Remember, this doesn't only reflect on who you are, but it reflects on your department uh, at the school. It, depends, it, it reflects Purdue Northwest. It, it could even uh, reflect on your family. Um, so, make, so this is a small world and recruiters talk. The recruiters talk across the industry, especially those that are coming to the same career fairs. So make sure that you put your best foot forward. Okay. Caitlin. Uh, and so that kind of wraps it up here. Um, we are, we have full availability through virtual appointments. And so if you do have, you know, any questions, you can absolutely reach out to us, uh, by phone number, which is, which is listed above by email. Um, we have appointments literally from, from eight, even not probably more like nine o'clock, uh, till four 30. Okay. From Monday through Friday. Just make sure you schedule something with us. If it's something as simple as, you know, it could be 15 minutes, it could be an hour, we could be multiple sessions. If you need more help, we are absolutely willing and able uh, to help out. Remember the Online Career Center is there for any modules that you might be interested in, whether it's starting point of, you know, I'm still trying to figure out my major, my interests to here, I, I know what I want now, let me write a resume or let me prepare, really prepare for this career fair. Uh, are there any questions out there? And if there are, you know, feel free to put them in the chat. So 
So I have a uh, question um, that I've that I've gotten before in terms of I'd like to hear both of y'all's um, insight on in terms of when you're in a group session with uh, with an employer, maybe with a larger group. Um, what would be your recommendations on uh, maybe how to either potentially stand out or at least make sure that you're uh, being heard within that group session, so they're being so you're someone that uh, is remembered when you come back. I'll go ahead and start with this one. So when I'm thinking about group, I don't want to call it like a group interview, but being in a group setting, I think the best way to stand out is to try to be really authentic and try to think of the most clever question. Um, so for me, like I have a couple of questions that I will typically ask in all my interviews and employers have told me that they are different types of questions they've never heard. And so I think relating yourself to um, a certain question or how Jorge mentioned podcasts, something interesting um, about yourself and making sure the employer knows that. Or doing something funny, like in my interview, I accidentally spilled tea on my now supervisor. And although that was super embarrassing, I'll always be remembered. So just, it's okay to, you know, be fun. Yeah, and some, uh, in my experiences with uh, viewing those group uh, types of sessions, a lot of times it's just be the person that actually responds to questions when they ask a question to the group, actually be someone that has an answer to that, you know, and just making sure you're confident in that uh, representation and asking questions when they say, does anyone have any questions? Throw out a question, even if you don't necessarily, it may not be a burning question for you, but at least if you have something to say that you communicated with them. Um, and then part of what Jorge mentioned is that follow-up message is always really helpful is what I would Caitlin, what, what is maybe a, a question that you ask that, that stands out? Um, so one thing I always like to ask, especially when I was a younger professional, is admitting like I am a really young professional. What's the best advice that you could give me um, when it comes to career in general or for, you know, these types of positions? That has always been a really fun question because employers... I found employers also love talking about themselves. They love to give advice. They love helping students. So it's a really cool question to see, you know, their perspective on just career and professional life in general. Um, and another one I like to ask is, you know, like, although I see what you're looking for here in this job description, um, what is something you actually want this person to accomplish within the, you know, the first 30 to 60 days? So I think this is a really cool opportunity for you to um, maybe answer that question for them if you haven't touched on what they're looking for. Um, and I also think employers do have their own agenda, their own goals. So then you kind of know what you're getting into. Although your job says this, you know, like your main priority will be this specific project. Yeah, Caitlin, I, I like that first question a lot because it shows some vulnerability. Um, it shows that uh, you're also being authentic. Like you're not trying to put put off a front that that you have you know many years of experience, uh, and at the same time, it gains kind of an ally, a mentor in the process. Okay, so we got a question that says, how do I get my resume to the employer? Is that something I need to send to them? Okay, and that's a, that's a really great question, especially now being in a virtual setting. Um, so what will happen is that the reason why we're really encouraging you to have a profile and upload your resume is that when you are connecting with that person, they will get a schedule of everyone that they are meeting with. And if you have a resume on your profile, they're going to be able to directly download that resume from your profile. So it should be able to get them get that to them super easily. Let's say that you accidentally forget to upload a resume by the time the fair happens, I would go ahead and make sure you have the contact information of the person that you met with, like Jorge mentioned, and send them a follow up email. Um, as Jorge mentioned too, but make sure that resume is attached. First, let's really try to prioritize putting out a handshake just to make their job easier and so that they can see it ahead of time and ask you really great questions based on your fantastic resume that you had reviewed. I will say many of that within those um, interactions with them, most interactions that I've been able to view with employers will tell you if they want a resume, how they will accept that. So if they have a job posting, um, which Caitlin already mentioned earlier, but 
keeping track of, you know, how, if they tell you, it's one of the things, making sure you're active listening. If they say, here's how I want you, here's how we accept application materials, then that's something they may have already mentioned within their presentation. But if, that could be something that's a relatively simple question um, if, if necessary. All right, any last questions? Okay, well, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this will be recorded, posted. Uh, if you do have any questions and wanted to reach out to one of us individually, um, feel free to go on to Handshake. And on in Handshake, you can actually schedule uh, with us. That way we can really help you make sure that you feel fully prepared uh, before getting in front of employers. Thanks so much for joining. Awesome. Thank you.